I'd like to show you how to draw a beautiful gemstone. Now this is quite a large size. It's about a 50 carat and it's a blue topaz with many, many facets due to its size. Normally we have to uh, simplify the facets when we draw and also when we color. So the first thing to do is to measure the stone accurately. I have here a digital caliper and so 27.83 and then let's look at the width is 19.36 and we can't use um, hundredths of a millimeter so we're going to say it's 28 by 20. We just round it up. That'll be good enough for our drawing. Then we want to take our templates and we want to make a guideline. Very important to have accurate guidelines. So we'll use a 90 degree to start with. We know that the width is 20 millimeters. So we're going to measure that 20 across 10 millimeters out on each side of the vertical guideline. And then we'll also measure 20 millimeters above and below because the bottom portion of the gemstone is going to be a half round. So if we put our circle template now over those tick marks, we should be able to centralize our circle really well. It doesn't matter about the tick marks on your template because we don't need them. We're gonna make sure that it's centralized by making our initial markings. So if we draw the bottom of the stone, now we have to measure the top and we're going to start measuring from the very lowest point of that circle. And we're gonna measure all the way up to 28 millimeters, which was the length, the total length of the stone. Then we can finish off the shape using one of the larger round templates so as to get a nice, smooth, beautiful wing on the pear shape. Great, once this is done, we're then going to need to start thinking about the facets. And the way that we normally calculate facets on any gemstone is to look at the width of the gem, to mark off half of the width, and then to divide that half into three parts. And one third of that will calculate how far in we come and that'll give us where our table starts and ends. So you can see we're bringing it in from both ends in towards the center, towards the table. So now with the templates properly aligned so that we can get horizontal and vertical lines accurately, we can then draw first of all our vertical lines and where those vertical lines are hitting the edge of the gemstone, we can then draw the horizontals. And this gives us a very nice proportionate look for the facets that wrap all the way around the table, which are called the crown facets. We also need to put in a few extra facets. There's a 45 degree facet on the bottom here. So here's from uh, three o'clock to six o'clock. We also want to go from 12 o'clock to nine o'clock. And this is not a 45 degree. So for this one, we can just use the free triangle. And again, from nine o'clock, uh, sorry, from 12 o'clock to three o'clock. And from nine o'clock to six o'clock. So those are the typical facets that we would draw on most gemstones. Very simplified. As you see, this stone has many more facets, but we usually don't draw so many because it's very time consuming. The next thing we need to do is to trace this beautiful shape onto our tracing paper. So in tracing, we have to tape down the tracing paper to make sure that it doesn't move and that we won't get any doubling of our lines. And when you trace, please make sure your pencil is really nice and sharp. Go gently and carefully and slowly so that you can really follow the line without making any mistakes and making sure that your shape is accurate. And turn the paper. If you turn the paper, your hand will be so comfortable. If your hand is comfortable, you do a great job. If your hand is not comfortable and you're stretching it awkwardly, then usually you go out of your lines. The outline is pretty fast and pretty easy to do. Then of course we have to follow that by putting in the facets. A lot of people like to do this with uh, 
templates to draw the facets because they're straight, but with a bit of practice, you should be able to do them by hand, beautifully straight and beautifully accurately. So once we have all of our facets in place, now the next thing to do is going to be to start coloring. But most importantly, we want to color on the opposite side to where you have drawn. Otherwise, you're going to get smudging between your white pencil and your 2H pencil. So to be able to see this drawing, we need to work with a white piece of paper behind. And of course, the coloring will have to be done on the black background. So with our colored pencils now, we're going to use our Color Soft, which are beautiful wax-based color pencils, which are going to work brilliantly. First, we have to work on the highlight areas of the stone. The highlight areas will always be in the upper left of the crown. That's the most intense white facet. And then as we come around the crown, that white is going to begin to fade out and disappear. Difficult for you to see on the white paper. So let's have a look on the black background. Intensity in this particular area gradually lightening up as it comes around. Also on the table, we need to put plenty of highlight area in the lower right hand end. So if you turn your paper around, you'll be able to get that tip of the pencil much further up closer to the line so that you can get very good table to crown definition, which is what we really want. And veiling and cross hatching and hatching. Make sure that you work that pencil on the paper until you get it very smooth. We want to use the entire range from the most intense to the lightest possible, even fading out, of course, without leaving any distinctive stopping lines. So as we work across, it has to be worked perpendicular to the light source. If you keep your pencil nice and sharp, for me, I find that it works so much better and it's easier to get your graduation tickling the paper so that it fades. We want to do the same on the crown as we come around. We want to make sure that it lightens up and that it fades out and disappears. And all the time remembering table to crown definition. Make sure that if you're working on the crown, you're not leaking onto the table. And if you're working on the table, that you don't leak onto the crown area. And try to make sure that you have that intensity of color on the crown as well. Now you see why we can't use the pencil on the front side, because the pencil would blend with this white color, giving it a very grayish kind of look. We need it to be pure white. So once we have the blending done as best as we can with that full range, without any distinctive stopping lines, our next step is going to be to add color. Where that light strikes, it has to be very intense white. Good, so once that's done, now we're going to look at the gemstone once again. So here's the stone, that lovely blue, light blue color. We've actually got the blue pencil in the box that works quite well for that particular stone. So we're gonna start by applying the body color to the table always in the upper left and coming down perpendicular to the light source, making sure to hatch, cross hatch, and even a little bit, just blending it in with the white, making sure that you work very lightly over the surface and mix the blue and the white together, but make sure that you don't go completely over the entire surface. Leave that white highlight area very, very bright. Intensify the blue as much as you can. You want that blue to come out, and show up, and the intensity of a stone is one of the most important things about a gemstone. So make sure that you remove every little bit of grain on that paper and blend it nicely with the white. No distinctive stopping lines. 
So that's the table. Now we come to the crown area. And so as we add to the crown all the way around, very intense in the lower right, gradually coming around, of course the blue color is going to start to get lighter. It's going to start blending with the white highlight area and just remember to leave that one part where the light strikes completely white. So get right up to the edges. A nice sharp pencil here is the best way to work. And remember to turn your paper so that you can get right up to the edge but not over the edge. It's really important to have good definition on all of the different parts of the stone. You can see how the crown is pretty much the same thickness all the way around, and the blending is done smoothly. Great, so we can check the color. Again, you can see a lot of white in the stone, and so we might come back and add a little bit of white. It's one of the nice things about these pencils is that you can go backwards and forwards, blending them together until you finally get exactly, exactly the color you want. You need it lighter, add more white. You need more intensity of color, add more blue. Great, so highlight area and body color are not the only two things that we need to apply. If we get those looking really good in the right place and properly applied, then the next thing we're going to do is to start thinking about putting more depth into the stone. And how do we get depth? We can get depth with a little bit of shading. The blue itself, is great to add intensity, but it's not going to be what gives the real depth in the stuff. You can see how nicely blended that is. Now we come in with the shading pencil. This is the 2H lead. And we're going to start in the upper left. And that's where the light enters into the stone. We're going to follow the shape of that table working down perpendicular to the light source and you can see already how that adds quite a bit of depth. So if we put the shading in the right place, it's going to really make the stone much deeper. The other area to add is to the crown and specifically in the lower right. And that one facet right there that's furthest away from the light is going to be the darkest facet. And then gradually that shading also has to fade out as we come up and around on both sides. And as we come up and around and it gets lighter and lighter, it blends with the blue. Now what we have to be careful is not to put too much shading. And that's a very common problem. So work it in with the blue color or the color that is the body color of the gem and make sure that you go over all of the gray not to make it too dark. You have to keep watching for distinctive stopping lights. If you see them, burnish them away. Great, even on the edges of the crown, we need to make sure it's really well burnished. And you can also use your burnishing pencil for this. There's a blender pencil that we enjoy using because the blender doesn't add any extra color. Whereas as you can see here, the blue is adding more blue to the stone. Now that makes a difference and it really gives some depth. At this point, we're going to have to put on the facets. And you can see the facets from the original design. We can just highlight where the facets come out onto the edge of the stone so that we can see very, very clearly exactly where each facet begins and each facet ends. If you do this on your paper, then we can take the tracing paper with our colored gem, 
put it simply over the top and you can see exactly where to draw from which part to which part. With a very sharp 2H pencil, we can start to put those lines in the right places. And just remember as you do this, good table to crown definition is key. I like to turn my paper as I work. If I turn the paper, my hand is always comfortable. If my hand is always comfortable, I'll be able to do a great job to bring those facets right up to the edges that they need to touch. Sometimes just a little touch up right up against the edge of the table or against the edge of the crown can be helpful. Now these are the facets that we do in the 2H pencil and they should be able to be very clearly seen against the lighter areas. But in the dark areas, you're not going to be able to see the facets. So we want to take a nice sharp um, knife and with that knife, we can scrape off some of the color in order to be able to put white facets against the darker background. Again, the scraping has to be very straight, very careful, gently putting it in exactly the position you need it and keeping, of course, very good table to crown definition. And as we scrape a little bit of that color off the paper, that's going to allow us to see the white facets on the colored background. Try to make sure you don't cut the paper when you do this. Good. So now we're going to turn over the piece of paper and on the back side, we will put some white ink to just run along the same lines that were just scraped. And if you make those lines really nice and fine, that would be the best you could possibly do. Fine and precise. Of course, being on the back of the paper, they are very bright at this stage. But when we turn our piece of paper and we look at the front of the design, you'll see that we have very subtle and very neat and clean facets that will look very appropriate. And these are only going to be toward the darker area and basically fading out towards the lighter areas. I can also highlight a little bit of the back of the paper for highlight area to make sure that that particular part really shows light escaping from the stone, light coming back up at us, the brilliance that we would like to see from each and every gem. Now the ink is not possible to blend as easily as color pencils. So what we can do is take our white pencil, clean it up, make sure you don't have any blue on it, and then rub it over the ink so that we can really blend that line without leaving a distinctive stopping line. Because if you leave a distinctive stopping line on the back, it'll show right through to the front. This way, we can really get the ink to also blend nicely, smoothly, and we'll get a really good range from very intense white all the way to fading out. Here's another little trick, putting some white ink on the one facet that really faces the light is going to make that particular facet stand out and look as if the light is striking it directly. Now we have to leave those to dry before we flip the paper over. Here you can now see how the light really strikes that facet and how the light comes through the stone and back out of the table. This is a last finishing touch with the white ink. We can put two very fine highlights and those highlights give us the impression that
that the surface is nice and flat because we draw them straight and it helps us to really see depth in the stone. And that's our finished product.